Production support for award-winning News 6 has come from Whirlpool Corporation's Finley Division, working to make your life a little easier. Additional support has come from the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation and from this public television station. Hi, we're from Columbus Grove Middle School in Vonsville, Ohio. Today on News 6, we'll learn about custom lawn making, see a prize catch, and visit a high-stepping teacher. Hi, and welcome to News 6. I'm Jeff Dye from Columbus Grove Middle School in Vinesville, Ohio. Here with our first story, Scott Pauly. Have you ever made something because you couldn't find exactly what you were looking for? That's why a Columbus Grove man started making his own fishing rods. He soon took that hobby and turned it into a business. Mr. Anderson has been running the Sportsman Repair Center for the past four years. After retiring from being the president of the Northwest Fuel Injection Service, he turned his hobby of making and repairing fishing equipment into a full-time business. Mr. Anderson, what is it that you do here at the Sportsman Equipment Repair Center? Well, I make custom-built fishing rods and repair rods and uh, reels. They bought eight different kinds, different makes of reels and, and uh, tro electric trolling motors and air guns. How long have you been making custom rods? Oh, about four years. What are the steps in making a rod? Well, first off, you have to select the rod, the, the rod, and then the next thing is get the parts all together, like I've shown here. And then on top, then the next thing is put the handle on the blank, which would be, in this case would be a spinning rod. And and they have to lead through in a certain sequence because if you don't have room to to extend your winding out each way, you don't have, it's not possible to get a clear winding like this because you have, to con you have to do your compressing out here in order to get this to come out like it is here. Now, after you've got the, the handle on and this part here, you take this and use this much of it. This part here has to have the thread sealer all put on it and it takes at least two coats and sometimes three depending on the thickness of your thread. Then after that you, you take this part here and slide it on over the top, come back to here like this. You've got the, the drill seat here and then you've got this goes on here and up to that. You've got a winding check that you put on the end of there to, to, for the thread to go uh, to wind against like this one here. See how that's put on there? Then your, your thread goes on there. And then your, your next step is to put the, the serial number, the year of manufacture, and the logo that I put on to identify me as the, the maker of the rod. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, for showing us how you make custom rods. Today's show is being produced by Mr. Jerry Hurston's sixth grade class, sixth grade take class. Columbus Grove is located about 20 miles from Lima. The town was founded in 1842 and has a current population of 2,500. While a lot of people enjoy hunting, most stick with bird or game. We recently met a man who shot a bear while on a hunting and fishing trip in Canada. We got him to tell us all about it. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Price. What interests you about bear hunting? Oh, just being out in the woods and, you know, there's not so many other people around and it's quiet and it's just a good place to be. Everybody likes to hunt. What kind of equipment do you use when you go bear hunting? Oh, I use a seven millimeter magnum on this bear here. And, and uh, when it, you know, we went back in the woods there, we're up in Canada and, uh, we drove back there and we was fishing and the bear come into camp and a couple of times on us so uh, we started using cookies and stuff we had around there for bait and he kept coming back in and when season come in he'd come in pretty regular every day so when everybody else went out fishing and I just waited back at camp and for the bear to come in and uh, we set some cookies up on a post, and when he come up to eat the cookies, 
I shot him. What did you do after you shot it? You know, the first thing I done is I had to follow him in the bush. I shot him and he took off running. He squealed like a pig and he ran off in the bush. And then after that, I uh, followed him a little ways and he laid down and uh, he died right there. Then uh, I waited a little while and, and uh, started to gut him out. And, and then by that time, the other guys were out fishing had heard the shot, so they came back in and helped me. How big was the bear when you shot it? Well, there was some other fellows with me there, and uh, we decided that he weighed around 280 pounds. The bear was probably another foot or so longer than what you see him right here. <laughs> Not all dancers here to make it in the big time. There are some who love to teach, and we talked with a lady who loves doing just that. Miss Becky Allstetter has been teaching young children dancing lessons for eight years. She operates her dance studio out of her home located just east of Columbus Grove on State Route 12. Her students' ages range from three years old to 18 years old, and she is affectionately known as Miss Becky. Miss Becky? What made you decide to teach dancing? I started taking dance when I was three years old. And when I was in eighth grade, I became a student teacher for my dance teacher in Florida. And she became ill, and I got to take over the classes for a day. And that was the day I decided I really wanted to do this for a living. I've noticed your trophies here at the studio. Could you tell us the story behind them? Um, the one we got first place championship at Notre Dame. I took a group of girls um, to Notre Dame for a competition. And we competed against uh, girls all over the country, and we ended up getting first place. So it was our first competition and our first first place trophy. Could you tell us about your trip to New York? Um, I took a group of girls down to regionals at Cincinnati, and Linda Phillips placed third in the competition, and that made her eligible to compete in New York at the national championships. We went to New York, we were there for a week. We had uh, four days of competition and convention, and we went sightseeing and did a lot. We didn't place in New York, but we had a really great time. It was a great experience. What do you feel your students get out of taking dance lessons? I think it helps build character and it helps them with poise and self-confidence. What's your favorite thing about teaching dance? I really like working with the kids and watching them grow up. There's a lot of girls that I've had since they were three until they graduate, and it's, it's nice being a part of their lives. Thank you, Miss Becky, for talking to us about dance. That's all for this week's show. Join us next time when News 6 travels to Defiance, Ohio. Support for award-winning News 6 has come from Whirlpool Corporation's Finley Division, working to make your life a little easier. Additional support has come from the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation and from this public television station.